In this video, we will be discussing the light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis. Light-dependent reactions of a plant take place within the chloroplast. The chloroplast has an inner and outer membrane. Underneath the inner membrane is where photosynthesis takes place. This space is filled with a colorless fluid called stroma. Stroma surrounds grana which are comprised of the little green discs that are stacked like pancakes. These green discs are called thylakoids. A single stack is called a granum. The membranes that interconnect the grana are called stroma lamellae. The light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis take place within the thylakoid membranes. Let's take a closer look at the membranes of the thylakoid. The outside of the membrane is surrounded by stroma, and within the membrane lies the lumen. The first complex is photosystem 2, which may also be called P680. This is because in the red part of the visible spectrum, it absorbs light maximally at 680 nanometers. Photosystem 2 houses light harvesting complexes, which house many chlorophyll molecules that absorb light. The light reaction center of Photosystem 2 consists of multiple proteins and pigment molecules. Within the light reaction center is a special pair of chlorophyll molecules, a pheophyton molecule, plastoquinone QA, plastoquinone QB. Plastoquinone QB is a mobile carrier. Next, we have cytochrome B6F complex, the mobile carrier plastocyanin, photosystem 1 complex, which also has a light harvesting complex as well as a light reaction center with a pair of P700 chlorophyll molecules. We then have the mobile carrier ferredoxin, ferredoxin NADP plus reductase or FNR, and finally we have ATP synthase. The process starts with the photon of light entering the light harvesting complex of photosystem 2. The photon will be absorbed by the chlorophyll molecules. The chlorophyll molecules will then begin to vibrate and transfer the energy through a process called resonance energy transfer. This energy will be transferred to the special chlorophyll molecules in the light reaction center. For animation purposes, the photon is shown as energy jumping from one chlorophyll molecule to the next until it reaches the light reaction center. Once the energy is absorbed in the light reaction center, an electron of the special chlorophyll molecule will become excited and jump to a higher energy state. When this happens, the chlorophyll molecule that the electron resides in will have a decrease in reduction potential. Each molecule has its own intrinsic reduction potential. In simpler terms, its threshold at which it will accept an electron. When a molecule has a high reduction potential, that means it has a high affinity to accept an electron. Once the molecule has accepted the electron, it is said to be reduced. The potential has been met by accepting an electron and becomes reduced. When a molecule loses an electron, it is said to be oxidized. When this happens, the reduction potential becomes greater and will want to replace the lost electron. In essence, a molecule that has become oxidized has a higher affinity to accept an electron or become an electron acceptor, whereas a molecule that has been reduced has a higher affinity to donate an electron or become an electron donor. Now that the electron has been excited to a higher energy state, it transfers to the pheophyton molecule. Then to plastoquinone QA and then to plastoquinone QB. This process will happen again until plastoquinone QB has two electrons. Before we move along, let's take a look at how the chlorophyll molecules in the light reaction center will get more electrons to replace the ones it just lost.
Near the bottom of the light reaction center is the oxygen evolving complex. This is where H2O is split into an oxygen atom, two hydrogen ions, and two electrons. This process is known as photolysis. The exact steps in this oxygen liberation process are only poorly known, but manganese, chloride, and at least one enzyme appear to be involved. H2O molecule is split. Two electrons travel to the chlorophyll molecules. Two hydrogen ions will be displaced in the lumen, where they will eventually travel to the enzyme ATP synthase and the oxygen atom will wait for another reaction to happen. When it does, the two oxygen atoms will join creating O2, or oxygen, and be free to exit the stomatal pores of the plant, giving us clean oxygen to breathe. Plastoquinone QB picks up two hydrogen ions from the stroma and travels to cytochrome B6F. Hydrogen ions enter the lumen while the electrons travel through cytochrome B6F and then enter the mobile carrier plastocyanin. Cytochrome B6F will pump two more hydrogen ions into the lumen, further creating a concentration gradient between the lumen and the stroma. Plastoquinone QB will travel back to photosystem 2 and plastocyanin travels to photosystem 1. Electrons then travel to the special chlorophyll molecules in photosystem 1. A photon transfers its energy throughout the complex, and an electron is transferred to a higher energy state being released and picked up by the mobile carrier ferrodoxin. Ferrodoxin then transfers the electron to ferrodoxin NADP plus reductase, or FNR. This process happens again until the FNR has two electrons. Then, NADP plus from the stroma will come to the FNR along with a hydrogen ion where the two electrons, the hydrogen ion, and NADP plus will converge and become NADPH. Lastly, inorganic phosphate and ADP collect on the outside of ATP synthase. The concentration gradient between the lumen and the stroma causes hydrogen ions to pass through ATP synthase. When this happens, it gives ATP synthase the energy required to combine ADP and PI to create adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. And this concludes the light-dependent side of photosynthesis. Yeah.